Well, the simple answer is that the turbine blades are designed to take advantage of the decrease in steam pressure and consequent increase in steam velocity. As we know, the heart of the turbine, the bit that makes it work, is the relationship between the fixed and moving blades. The fixed blades guide the steam onto the moving blades. As the steam passes through the moving blades, it causes the disc to which they are attached to rotate, and consequently the shaft rotates. Each pair of stationary and associated moving blades are known as one stage. Most steam turbines contain many stages of blading. In this example of a single cylinder machine shown here, we have seven stages. And do not forget the stationary blade is always ahead of the moving blade. Actually, each pair of stationary blades is shaped to form a convergent, divergent nozzle. However, the form of the nozzle is bent to receive the steam exiting from the previous moving stage and then to turn and redirect the steam onto the next moving stage. Now, before you raise the question, but what about impulse and reaction type blading? Let me say that in practice, when you're operating a turbine, it's not vitally important whether the blading is impulse or reaction. This is really a design and construction feature. However, it will certainly be worth our while to take a look at this subject as the type of blading used does affect other structural features. Let's first examine impulse blading. As the steam passes through the first row of stationary blades or nozzles, its pressure decreases, and as a result, the steam velocity increases. These changes are plotted on this graph. As this high velocity steam is directed onto the moving blade, the impulse pushes the blade forward and consequently produces rotation of the shaft. By the time the steam leaves the moving blade, it has lost much of its velocity and it then passes on through the next row of stationary blades. Again, the pressure falls and the velocity increases due to expansion of the steam. And once again, this is directed onto the next row of moving blades and so on. We can see that as a result of pressure drop, the velocity of the steam increases each time it passes through a set of stationary blades. But the velocity then decreases as the steam passes through the moving blades and gives up energy. Eventually, when the pressure has fallen to a low value, it can no longer expand and produce work, and it is exhausted from the turbine. But look what happens here to the pressure as the steam passes through the moving blades. It does not decrease, neither does it increase. In fact, the pressure across the moving blades remains the same. It is the change in velocity which actually does the work and provides the energy to drive the turbine. This feature of impulse blading, that is constant pressure across the moving stage, brings about a certain constructional advantage. As there is no pressure drop, there is no tendency for steam to leak around the outside circumference of the blades. Because of this feature, we will inevitably find that impulse blading is used used in the high pressure stages of the turbine. In fact, you'll often see large holes bored through the wheel or disc in the higher pressure stages. This is done to ensure that there is no pressure differential across the wheel and so maintain the correct impulse characteristic of the moving blades. Now let's move on to look at the characteristics of reaction type blades. In this case, the mechanical force on the blade is caused by reaction as the jet of steam exits from the blade. This is the same concept as a jet engine. With this type of blading, the moving blades are shaped in the same manner as the fixed blade, that is, in the profile of a curved nozzle. This causes the steam pressure to fall as it passes through the moving blade resulting in an expansion of the steam and an increase in its velocity relative to the blade, causing a powerful jet action. As before, the exiting steam then passes into the next stage of fixed blades, where it is again expanded and redirected to enter the next set of moving blades. 
So you can see that in this type of blading, the pressure decreases as the steam passes through both the moving blades and the stationary blading. Although the reaction turbine is efficient in its use of heat, there is always the potential for some losses due to steam leaking around the periphery of the moving blades, especially in the high pressure section. In order to reduce this tendency, a reaction turbine will normally have many more stages so that the pressure drop in each stage is lower. Consequently, the machine will be further. In practice, a compromise is reached, and today most turbines combine both types, using impulse blading in the high pressure stages and reaction blading in the low. Now, at this point, it's time we all took a break, and then we'll come back and look more closely at turbine construction. For now, please switch off the tape and review this material in your workbook.